after a while, after I've been doing it for a couple hours and my hand starts to sink, and that's mm -hmm. where I'm going to run into risk of, of hurting myself with the <coughs> things dropping on me a little bit. So just a, as a new guy, uh, maybe my saw's a little heavy too, I'm using something a little bit too big. Well, but I, I need to watch that after I've been about three or four hours. Yeah, if you're new, it's going to, for me, it was like one to two years. <laughs> And I felt like I was de developing new muscles. I was pretty strong when I started this, and but a lot younger than me too. But the the muscles weren't there for for what I was doing, and I'd get a lot of aches and pains from that. That's like with any job, though. I did uh, a f I put down a floor, wood floor, and hitting that nailer, that was something I wasn't used to, and it it was. Painful. My chiropractor told me after after my chainsaw runs out of gas, I should <coughs> do some stretches before I even start another another chainsaw or another gas tank, and it, it works pretty good. Oh yeah, good stretches. advice. Yeah. I wasn't wondering about the, the whole physical thing, but rather the art thing. Do you? Sometimes um, I've got to a stumbling where I'm trying to make something look right and it's just not working, and when I come back the next day, it's kind of stupid, why don't you just move over here, and then things, I don't know if you ever, someone, I've heard a lot of artists say, well, I'll only work on it for a couple hours, and then you can step back, and yeah. then come back and look at it again, and you'll see something different, and you've heard, you know, the other things, that's always one, are you up? Okay. Yeah, I'm on track, I want to stay on track, don't interrupt me, because I'm going to finish that one shot, or... I know that feeling, and when you're working on something that you, you that you're really passionate about completing, you want to be there. But I've learned that if you actually do go home and approach it the next day, you will make less mistakes, and you'll thank yourself later if it's towards the end of the day. Like because that that's normally when you put all the detail in, and, and sometimes coming back to it later on. Uh, with a fr with a fresh fresh approach helps. One of the one of the things I've noticed that with a sculpture like that, I, I travel about five minutes to my farming spot, and if I have a bear or something on my trailer, and I'm taking it home for the night, and I look at it in the rear view, yeah. I'm like damn, that ear's not right. Hey, I didn't even notice. And you're looking at it in the mirror, so maybe even That's looking at something in a mirror in place will catch you. Oh. Catch something you didn't see. Well, rear view mirror would help, and also years. Like if you look back at something, maybe you did one or two years ago, oh, you think everything. the same thing. That's and a good. If it's ever possible, upside down, also. Yeah. Like that. Oh yeah, lay it down on the ground, look at it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's 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 very true. Do you look at your wife's photos of your progress and say, oh, I didn't see that in the photo? Mm -hmm. that helps I too. use photos as a second eye. Yeah, and I wish I had that eye when I was, car when I was carving it because the photographs, I, I think, oh, I wish they looked as good as I you know, thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant that they're good photos, but... <laughs> shut up, shut up, Richard. Walk away. You've been married long enough, you know. <laughs> Hang on a minute. We were <laughs> well. You were da you were dancing on the electric cord. You it on the it, so it's got to it's got to warm back up again. Couple more questions. <laughs> I know. I know. When I get in the room, I don't always want to stop. I mean, it's going, and I feel like I, I'm not sure what. You know, maybe the next day it's not going to be as good for me because some days I, I can see it better than I can others. <coughs> yeah. Um, Were you just? Was there a, a question that, in that? Well, I, I, <laughs> how far can I go? We were talking before about how long do you go before you stop and maybe step back and look at it. Uh, but if, if, I, if it feels like it's flowing, I'll, I'll keep going. But sometimes that's not a good idea. I'm yeah. tired and I'm not seeing it. Yet. Everybody's different. And, and for my, me personally, I'm, I'm different. Um, I don't have uh, a standard. What I'm working on is the same time. <coughs> an hour or so, I'll sit the saw down and step back. Um, I, I, I intentionally sit it down once an hour and step back and I'll walk around my apartment. 
and, and that helps me to kind of, because if you, if you keep going, you'll get down into that tunnel vision, mm. and then you'll end up making overcuts, and so it helps to step back. And, and I do that once, about once an hour, I'll sit down for like 15 minutes, and it, it helps to restart the brain. For example, with this carving, we had to reset my camera every 20 minutes, so if I wasn't there, he actually <coughs> would have to go back and push the buttons to do it. Um, and I noticed, like, he, I could see in the phones and stuff, he would take that time to look at the carving, too. And sometimes, even in between there, if he was switching on a saw, he would step back. And there was a lot of footage where he had his um, sketch on his trailer to the left, which you can't see there. And he steps back, he looks at it for a minute, and then he goes at it again. But he referenced that a lot throughout the whole uh, carving. And I have a question. On this bear here, uh, that back part where you overcut, was that on a day that you were trying to stay later and make more progress, or no? Uh, it probably just out of was. Curiosity. It probably was. I, I put that there just to... You don't want to do that if you're competing or something that that will uh, throw you out of the. I don't know, but I've seen some people really make overcuts and stuff work. <coughs> but that's an overcut. I don't. I'm not going to show you it. <laughs> she will. Yeah. Now I can smell linseed oil on it. What kind of mix did you put on it? Yeah, this is uh, Australian timber oil, uh, honey teak. It was just um, a gallon that I had. It took a whole gallon. Um, and because of the temperature and stuff, I had to keep it uh, inside to dry, and it doesn't dry as fast. So that's why you might smell some of, some of the oil still. That you mentioned it. It's timber filling the room. Yeah. Timber what? Timber oil. Timber oil. Australian timber oil. One coat? Uh one coat. I did it one day, but I went over the carving um, many times as you'll see in a later video. I've just Did you do any burning first? Yep. Um yeah, so we can keep playing these videos. This is me furring, and then after I'm after I'm done furring and doing the details and stuff on the face, I it'll show uh, me using a big propane torch and burning the whole thing. So this this carving actually might not be in its fin final stage. I might paint the uh, the bears black. Um, I wanted to dry brush it. The dry brushing is is is. Oh, like what I did on this Terminator, using silver to go over. <clears throat> Any other questions while this plays? Yes. I attend a lot of competitions, and some of the guys you can see them start getting tired by afternoon so we usually walk up and suggest that they use some power tools or something and take time to look at that because not all you guys are built the same and we get some newer guys carving but you can definitely see they start making over cuts extra cuts and uh, they're getting tired you know they're not used to going for 10 hours each day yeah. normally at home they don't they're studio carvers a lot of times so we watch over them quite a bit when we see them at competitions. That's and when they use a sander and stuff, that gives their arms a chance to break, lets them focus on the carving a little bit better. But yeah, like you said, each one of you guys are different. Yeah. But you can go six hours, no problem. Me, I can go an hour and kind of walk away. The competitions are, are amazing to watch. Of course, of another color. Yeah. I'm new at this too, really new, and I'm still learning how to handle the saw mm -hmm. and one thing I found is that like if I go if I try to cut too aggressively then you end up with an overcut doing that too so like just let the saw do the work I keep telling myself and then when you get to near where you're supposed where you want to stop ease up on it and that's 
I'm still working on it, but I, I've realized that that's something that you can't be too aggressive trying to get where you want to be. Yeah, the longer you work at it, uh, probably muscle memory is the mm -hmm. is what kicks in there, um, and you can you can control what your saw does back here, you know, and your tips here, and, and also to speak to that is hard. To put this to use the tip of the saw more to to do the details and not to come down with the whole blade is really important because sometimes the tip is going to do something you don't want it to do if you yeah don't have it positioned right absolutely and i hope that helps somebody else that's new yeah um i saw you use some kind of sander tool that looked cylindrical what was that okay um that was a die grinder i probably i missed that but the only tools the only tools that I used other than a chainsaw on this was um, an angle grinder to sand with a four inch sanding wheel, uh, a die grinder, and a Dremel. And that, well, that was on the die grinder with a specially made eye bit, which is just a concave um, bit that really makes making an eye pleasurable. You had the one with the power ga gouge. Could we see that one more time? Sure. If possible? If, yeah, if we have enough time. To to go back. I didn't yeah, remember seeing it used. Okay. That power gouge is a, is a nice tool. It's um, something that you can use a lot or seldomly. Uh, I use it seldomly for areas that are hard to reach with a chainsaw. You can do it with the chainsaw, but it would just take a lot more time. Like, like in here, this is where I was using it. I cut away most of the wood I could with the chainsaw, but then I cleaned it up with that power gouge to really helped me sink it back in, uh, push the belly back in. Okay, thank you. You keep the, uh, you keep the <coughs> side guards on. I see a lot of guys take those off to save the weight. To the to the, uh, the metal. Yeah. Guards. Yeah, I left them on for a while, but. Um, I took them off. Uh, all it all it's doing, I think, is just protecting the belt, and making it heavier, and making it heavier and, <laughs> and bulkier. Yes, yes. But, so I burned the whole carving to get rid of the um, little rough stuff, and the, and then this is this is an oxygen acetylene torch that will go into the deep grooves that will not burn with a uh, propane torch. And you'll get more burned, you burn more of your carving than you wish, and then you can go over it with a brush or a uh, uh, orbital or something to to make highlights. That's one thing I forgot to do on this. I didn't I didn't really uh, go over it with a sander or anything to pull a flap sander to pull out <coughs> highlights on on the surface, but. <coughs> Then this is just me um, putting the timber oil on. But so there's a lot of um, a lot of steps involved in doing a larger piece. Uh, you know, if if you get the chance, work on something big. Uh, in a, in conjunction with smaller stuff, something that you can make one of at least every day. That was a um, a tip that was shared with me, and we'll probably. You know, you fare pretty well if you keep that in mind. Working on a couple big projects, but also making uh, bread and butter <laughs> carvings. And so you still do one, one small piece one. a day. What's that? Do one small piece a day, and then go on to the bigger one. Yeah, that would be nice if you could, if you can have that sort of discipline and stuff. <laughs> I I had asked you before if you need when working on a custom order. Multiple pieces, maybe to take a break and come back and look at your big bucks from a different angle at a different time of the day. You do will go on different projects. Oh yeah. Um, with the Terminator, I, I started him last year, and he was at an unfinished stage, and he just sat there because I knew that shaping all these uh, 
metal parts, cylinders and whatnot would have took a lot of time and I didn't have the time to do that. And I didn't have the time to do that, so I just painted it and was done with it. But to to really do justice to this, it would it would take probably f four times the amount of time I spent on it. And uh, I don't, I have other things to do. I, not independently wealthy, so I'm, I make other things. So these are different um, oils that that are good for protecting the wood and and hydrating the wood. Um, for the last couple of years, I've been using flood uh, just for ease of cleanup and. It's, it's a pretty easy product to work with. It, it dries a lot faster than the timber oil, but um, it's really ugly when you put it on. It goes on milky, and it takes a couple hours for that to go away. So a lot of people, when they're done with the carving, they'll put on an oil, it'll look really nice, and that's kind of the wow factor. But if you're going to use flood, it's a good product, but you won't get that initial wow factor with it. I have a question. Um, with the flood or, or the timber oil, are, are you using the, the hybrid water base or, or or the natural oil? I think the flood is water cleanup, so it has to be probably some okay. sort of hybrid. hybrid. It's hard to, I mean, I can't get anything with the oil out of, outside of quartz. I know. I, I am, but I still use it <laughs> because, of, you know, I'm, I'm working outside. I don't have an indoor facility, so that other stuff will freeze. Where I work, you know, so yeah, well, heat up the cabin, bring in my garage, which is still it's not heated, but I mean, you have to warm it up. Freezing, I learned that uh, the hard way. I, I had a bear about this size that I put blood on, and it froze, and it and it uh, stayed like a white. It was just nasty, and it was. It needed to refinish it. It never went away. Huh? It never went away. Yeah. You had to resand it then. Um, I just recoated it and. It kind of wasn't as noticeable. So on top. Yeah, on top. Put another coat on top. Yeah. And that was CWF? Uh, it was the flood. Yeah. I think that's, yes. So. I have had good results with the, the, the timber oil water based as well. Uh, in the summer especially, I, I put it on and I, I could either oil spar over it, uh, you know, spar finish over it, you know, the, as well as paint and and uh, once you put an oil base, especially the natural oil, yeah. um, then your seal is if you're going to put something over them, uh, they, they, they'll, they'll pop and they'll, one coat will be like three coats of without, without the, the base on it first. So you interchange some of these? I've done that. It's worked for me. I mean, putting like a timber oil, the water-based timber oil, and painting over it after that's dry. Yeah. And I use it for a sealant, protecting woods. We. It, and then, but then sometimes you want that natural wood, so I do it both ways. But most of the times I seal over it. We recommend um, when you coat your carving, do it initially. If it's by the time you're done carving on, if it's dry enough to take. And it'll tell you on the can like uh, when it's dry, when the wood's dry enough to take a finish. And then we say one week, one month, and one year. So and maybe in a week, if the temperature and the weather's permitting, it might be dry enough to give it another coat. And then in a year, you might want to give it another coat. You don't want to do do too many coats too close together or too far apart. Crude oil. Crude oil. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, there's there's many different things to work, uh, you know, to finish your carving with. I mix my spy varnish with uh, with uh, oil, linseed oil, and mineral oil for penetrating. And seal. Yeah. It works real well, and I'll wait, and then I seal it again. Mm -hmm. Depends which one, though. Huh? Depends which brand. Yes. Yes. I use you the Minwax, the really yeah. good stuff. <laughs> Try that with something else. It won't work. Louder, louder, please. When you first did the block out of your garden, you, you, you did a front profile, right? And then you, you popped it to the side and did a side profile. And you sort of raised on it. Is that what you're doing? I kind of look on this. Yes. So, how far do you go with that, I guess, is the question. Like, 
So where do I start when I'm blocking out from the front or, or the side, and uh, how close do I get uh, to the sculpture blocking out? So sometimes I start from the front, sometimes I start from the side. I might start from a three-quarter, um, and sometimes I would just make a, a plain cut, and other times, uh, if you can get right to uh, the silhouette of your carving, that would be great. It's just harder to do that. If I would sometimes, like if you're doing little bumps and stuff, it's better to take off a, a plane and then go in with a more maneuverable saw, different bar and chain setup to get the, the sub detail. So. Uh, here's some examples of, of past carvings that uh, took a, some more effort. This piece it was really fun to do. It's uh, three logs joined together, um, a removable tail and removable wings. Um, wings were made out of plywood and the tail had a dowel. Uh, Silver Surfer, um, I did that a couple years back, <coughs> ended up attaching part of the surfboard and it was going to be against the wall so I, I didn't uh, add the back of the surfboard but uh, that's a bearded collie, it was a, a piece that was joined together, it, it stood yeah, probably around my waist height, probably four four and a half feet long. Um, I went, I carved it from photographs. <coughs> this is the knight I brought with me. Um, it was a pretty complex piece. I, sometimes I use models. I had a model of this. And you can alter, I'll walk over here, you can alter your model to, to fit. I curved the, the shaft of this. I did did some tweaking to it, like a revised sketch process, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I did this up at Cook's Forest. It's a, an event that is run by Liz Bonnie and um, And it's a horse bench. Oh, this this I have a little bit to say about. This was an on-site job. The, the first picture to your left it was one day. Um, that's what I was budgeted for. And I got as far as I could go. It was a really big stump. And a year later, he commissioned me to come back another day and work on it. And the picture on the right is my second day, and I was able to get that much more detail. Um, and if I would have had another day, who knows? <laughs> was it pine? That was pine. I believe that was white pine too. Um, is that what you generally like to carve white pine? I like white pine a lot um, for many reasons. It's it's comfortable on your skin, the sawdust is. A lot of woods will really irritate you. And it cuts really nice. You're, you're able to remove the material. It still takes a lot of work, but it's, it's good work. It makes a good carving. That's just another on-site job. The picture to the left is block out stage. I took large sections out, flat planes. Wasn't it was too big to do the curvature. Um, 
I'm using the mini gouge on the top there, it's just an area that couldn't ex access with the, the saw really good. I think it um, was the cup behind the, it was the part behind the dog's ear and it just was easier to scoop it out with the mini gouge. And there's a picture on its chest, I just, sometimes I'll pin pictures to the carving. There's my family. They they came with me. Also, with size comparison to stand by it sometimes. That was a that was a very special dog to the family. So that's in their backyard. Good job. Oh, that's cute. I don't know which one's scarier. <laughs> Even though it may be one, uh, not multiple things going on, it, it's it's complex in that you know you got arms and, and tying all that together is a, is always a challenge. It's probably why I haven't given up chainsaw carving because every every carving is a ch is a challenge. You're trying to get that fluid, that movement of those arms is a, is a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even this picture here, which I admired the first time I saw it, if just to turn the head and get that kind of motion, extension expression, is a, it is a challenge piece to do so. I mean, if you can work it out on paper from a couple angles uh, and, and work, get your profile and then work it in as you, you know, from front to back, you know, keeping those perspectives, keep redrawing lines, that helps a lot. Absolutely. Before I carved this carving, I, I did one other smaller carving, and it was it was a cute bear. And then I just blew that up. But I basically had the turns and the twist figured out beforehand. Uh, and it, I didn't know I was going to make that out of this log, but uh, having freshly done that smaller one helped to do a bigger one. That's that's a good tip for complex carvings: is do something small and you have, it's, a, it's an easier time than to do it the first time big. You make sell it, them both. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. usually uh, you'll sell both. On that bear, did you, was, I saw that the, the tree is kind of off to of one side. Did that help? I know that when you put it in the middle, it's right in the middle of the bear, and it, it's a nightmare to get the finger legs and all that detail that you have to do down there. Did it help kind of kicking it off to the side, or was it still a knife? Uh, well, wood will have uh, irregularities in it, and that's where I, I, I look at the log and I determine from what angle. It may be narrower this way than this way, and depending on the carving, you might want the width this way, so you place it there. You might have a lean, so if it works by ex examining the log to, to use that to your advantage, use it. This piece was uh, joined together. Um, I didn't have a lean to the log, it was just pretty straight wood and I just joined it together. Uh, Real glue and uh, long timber lock screws. Does it ever split apart as the, the log? Uh... No, I wondered about that, so I'll have scrap wood and sometimes just two pieces that were joined with the glue. I'll let them lay around, lay outside, and see how it does, and they don't separate. I mean, a lot of my scrap pieces have not separated, so I imagine that the car- you use a scrap piece that's been laying there for a little bit, maybe, staying dry? Uh, let it try to dry out a little yeah, bit? Yeah, dry before. out or let it out in the weather experiment. Um, it pulls together pretty good. Um, <coughs> I've done lots of um, renditions of the willow tree figurines. The little model is on the ground. Like I said, I use models sometimes to, uh, to carve something as a reference in addition to photos. Um, so. Yeah, it had a chiseled look to it. Uh, if you know willow tree figurines, it looks like it was carved with a pocket knife. I bought a I bought a hand planer thinking that it would work, but it just ripped the fibers of the wood. 
So for a chiseled look, um, I have discovered that an angle grinder, just holding, holding an angle grinder to make a flat surface worked nicely. And that reproduction is excellent. You really nailed that. Thank you. That was a totem pole I did in, uh, uh, yeah, carving at the casino event held by the Bonnies. Um, the wolf, I just set him up there. It was a flat, flat surface. Uh, it would have been a cool addition, but that wolf is a separate piece. Uh, and then just a bunch of animals on there. And the way I approach that is just drawing on the log, marking areas that I don't, like the bird, uh, I don't want to cut off a wing, so I just marked where the wing begins and ends. Same way with the face. And there is a lot of blocking out in that and a lot of uh, whittling. For, for items like that where there's just carvings everywhere, you'll do a lot of whittling. <laughs> That's uh, attachments. Um, I carved the feet, then I added dowels to go into the body of SpongeBob, and then I added the, I carved separate hands, put dowels into them. Uh, it was fun. And that is the end of the slide uh, presentation. And I thank my wife. She made all that. She, so. Thank you.